Hi, I'm David McNeely, and I'd like to talk to you today about Direct Control 5, part of Centrify Suite 2012. In this overview video, I'd like to show you how easy it is to join Unix and Linux systems into Active Directory in order to centralize authentication and account administration. In many environments today, we find heterogeneous systems that are managed independently or within various departments, creating islands of identity where users have different user IDs and passwords across the various systems. And this creates several challenges for organizations making it difficult to meet regulatory compliance or adhere to security best practices. And it's difficult for IT operations to manage user accounts and access controls across the environment. With Centrify Direct Control, you can leverage the Active Directory infrastructure you already own to centrally manage account administration, user authentication, and password policy enforcement across all your Unix and Linux systems. Additionally, users will be able to gain single sign-on access to the applications and services running on these systems with their Active Directory user accounts. So first I'd like to show you the, the basics of integrating Unix Linux systems into Active Directory and the Unix account management uh, within AD. First of all, Unix systems, once we integrate into Active Directory, do get a computer account created. Just like any Windows system, there's a computer account, there's an operating system, and we fill in the operating system name and versions. You can see Red Hat Enterprise Server 5.4. There's also a direct control profile. We'll show you that a little bit later. We can empower any user that has an account in Active Directory to be able to log into the Unix Linux system. So let me show you Fred Thomas. He's our system administrator. The primary reason for this is we want to enable the user to use his Active Directory credentials, in this case fred.thomas at centrify.demo, to be able to log into Unix Linux systems. And we'll also enforce all of the account policies, like the login hours, the systems that he's authorized to log into, if his password is required to be changed in next login, or if his account is locked out. All of those are enforced on the Unix Linux systems exactly like they are on Windows. Under his direct control profile, we can also see that he's been granted login identities for the Unix Linux systems in the finance uh, zone as well as the web farm. And you can also see that he's got different identities. F. Thomas in finance with the UID of 503. Fred is his Unix login name on the web farm with the UID of 501. So let's see how that works on the Unix and Linux systems. Fred normally logs onto his desktop and it's a Windows 7 system and he'll type in his uh, Active Directory user ID and password to get onto the machine. And based on the login event to Active Directory you get a Kerberos ticket back and that enables us to get single sign-on as we access uh, the various Unix and Linux systems that have also been joined to Active directory. Uh, we do that by uh, opening up this SSH setting and turning on Kerberos for the login type. You'll notice here that the user got logged in by retrieving a host ticket from Active Directory for the computer we're trying to get to, Finance Server 1. It was logged in as Fred.Thomas. And if we type ID, we'll notice that his identity is 503 and his login name is FThomas. It all came out of Active Directory. If we look for Fred and Etsy password, we don't find any of his entries. Yet if we do a get int call, which makes a call through the NSS module for the password map, pipe that to more, we'll find that, in fact, his Active Directory account came across. Active Directory was translated to a Unix account. So that enables users to get single sign-on. So one of the other advantages of using Active Directory is that uh, it's a single place to do administration for accounts. Um, and a lot of times we'll do this for either vacation or contract termination. If I lock a user account in Active Directory and I'll apply this, let's go back to my uh, Windows machine for Fred Thomas. We'll launch PuTTY and try to gain access to that uh, finance server again. We'll notice that uh, we got disconnected. So it shows that we did get a Kerberos ticket, but it did not grant us access, and that's because Fred's account was locked out. We'll just close this real quick. Now if we go back and re-enable his account, turning off the uh, account disabled, try to do the single sign-on again, we'll get through this time. So there's uh, central management within Active Directory that enables us to centrally control the user accounts across all of your systems, Windows, Unix, and Linux. I want to show you how easy it is to get uh, Centrify installed. Um, this is a, another system, it's my web server. I'll just simply run uh, the Centrify is installed.sh and uh, we'll tell this to install the standard edition of our product. It's doing a quick check of the operating system. We'll use the administrator account, that's the name of the computer, the zone is web farm. So the installation of Centrify can be very simple. Uh, Unix administrators tend to want to use the command line interface and we make that very simple through install.sh. Um, you just need to run that on a system and answer a few questions to get Centrify Suite Standard Edition or Enterprise Edition installed. Additionally, you could use Direct Manage as a way to push out the software across a large number of systems. Just watch our video on Direct Manage to see how to use that tool. 
So zones enable us to very easily integrate multiple Unix identities out of various systems that you have in place into a common directory and link those back to the same user account. So now that the computer's been joined to the directory, AD Info shows that we've been joined to the centrify.demo domain and we're now a part of the web farm. So that means if we go back to Fred's desktop, launch his putty again, connect to the web server one, we'll get to authenticated again. The identity that we have is 501 and that matches up to what his Unix uh, zone properties were for this particular zone for web farm. Just because the machines were created at different times, managed by different departments, that's different from the finance zone where his identity is 503 and his login name is F. Thomas. In this case, we also provide single sign-on for the user as he accesses these systems. So one of the other features of Active Directory is group policy, and that enables us to centrally define settings that we can use to push out and configure a large number of machines with common configuration settings. In this case, I'll use the default domain policy. In the computer configuration, we have Centrify settings, and we also have Centrify settings underneath the user configuration. This enables us to define various policies, uh, such as copying files out to all the machines where the policy applies. Default domain would apply to all computers, but you could also narrow the scope to groups of computers or Active Directory OUs of specific computers. We have the ability to do things like set user mappings for local accounts. Uh, this is very powerful to do things like take the root account or your Oracle account and link it to a specific Active Directory account so that the password policy is now enforced and managed by Active Directory. In this case, my root account, if I were to try to ask you to root, I'd be required to type the password for administrator. Another thing I find a lot of customers wanting to do is to set um, SSH settings to prevent root from logging in over the wire. We can do that by uh, going into the SSH setting and saying permit root login and the simple drop-down box select that to say no. So that would deny root the ability to log in. And also through configuring a client to live interval, you can also define timeouts for SSH sessions so that they would drop after X amount of minutes of inactivity. Again, group policy provides a, a great way to centrally manage a lot of security settings across your Unix and Linux systems. For more complex enterprise environments and to learn more about advanced features of this release, I'd also encourage you to watch our Direct Control 5 advanced video also available on centrify.com.